good evening, uh, beloved brethren. We appreciate every one of us that are joining this program this night. Um, it's such a, a wonderful time to have this kind of program by this day. I, I know that many of us have been very tired uh, from the service today and some other engagements, but we promise you that your time that you're going to spend with us this night will be what the stress or what the sacrifice. This is the Watchman Young Adult Forum. It's a platform for all young adults in the Watchman in all the dioceses. We have a membership cut across the different dioceses in Nigeria and other nations of the world. At our last, last count, we have over 7,000 Watchmen, young adults, who are on the platform. And what is the purpose for bringing us together? Very simple, very straightforward. Our daddy, our father in the Lord, Pastor Aloysh Shukimika Anibo, has given us the vision of Isaiah 49, verse 5 and 6, as God gave it unto him. And every one of us believe that we are the young men of the princes and the young women of the provinces that are going to help to bring to pass the uh, vision of Isaiah 49, 5 and 6, the vision of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 12. And we have just you know, brought everything down into a seven point agenda. The things we look at, the things we discuss on the platform number one, we look at career, how to develop our careers and how to help one another to network. We also look at personal development. We touch on issues that relates to us as Christians, especially as watchmen. And then we focus on empowering one another and also discuss issues that relate to our health. Basically, we are out to bring back Jacob. And so far, I can say that God has been faithful and God has helped us. So if this is your first time of hearing of the Watchman Young Adult Forum, well, uh, if we're in the church, we'd say we should welcome you as a newcomer, <laughs> but it's okay. This is an online church. We appreciate your presence. So we want to pray now so that we can go straight into what we have for tonight. Uh, that is, is already online and is waiting for us. So shall we pray? Our most righteous Father in heaven, we worship your holy name. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege that you have given unto us. I haven't dying in your presence this morning. Uh, you're having your servants minister unto us live, and uh, many lives were transformed. At least I know of somebody in my location that came and said that this message was actually meant for me. And I appreciate your holy name for other places and other lives also that the message, Lord, transformed. Thank you, blessed Father, for that privilege. Thank you once again for another privilege I've given unto us this evening to gather together from all over the places both within and outside the shores of this country to listen even to your instrument that you have prepared today to speak to us on this topic that is very, very important. Lord, I am praying that as we go into the session that you would have your way, you will speak unto every heart, you will take hold of the mouth of your servant and speak unto every heart and heal every soul that in one way or the other might have been wounded and you will revive every heart, oh God, that needs to be revived and bring about restoration even in our lives and in our churches in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. you, blessed Father, for every participant. Thank you, oh God, for your instrument. Thank you for the stable network that we have even for this session. Take all the glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we are looking at the topic suspension in church. Is it for retaliation or it is for recovery? Uh, we sent out a questionnaire with about six, seven uh, questions and we got a lot of responses from the questionnaire. Some people think that um, suspension in church has become a tool for retaliation from the pastor, from the pulpit to the pew. Some other persons believe that it is a tool for recovery. But tonight, we have our daddy in the, in, the, in the faith who is here with us in the platform to discuss with us on this particular topic. Um, if you clap your hands, I know we will not be able to see, but with a show of hand, wherever you are, want to welcome 
our pastor, Pastor Dr. Protis Opara, to the platform. Daddy, good evening, sir. God bless you. Good evening, all. Yes, sir. So good to see you, sir. It's my pleasure. Very great pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. Thank so you. I'll be going up, sir, so that you can take up. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Barista, am I to take off now? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, God bless you all for connecting those connected through Zoom and those who hooked up through the various platforms. It was just two days ago that Barista Oyara informed me of this meeting and I need to squeeze out this time because of the, how important the subject matter is. I wish to implore that all the youths that are connected will pay attention. Um, I'm going to deliver a brief message and then the questions will now come from uh, Barista Yara so that with it we'll be able to cover some ground. You know, the subject matter of suspension or chastisement is such a broad one that should take at least three, four, sessions of one and a half hours to be able to do some justice to. So, but I'm going to use about 15 minutes to one hour to just give a synopsis of what it is. And then we'll take the questions, hoping that the questions will now cover more ground. So I want to implore that also the pastors who are connected through Zoom, we also appreciate the word that is coming. That topic, suspension in church for retaliation or recovery is a little narrow. I would prefer to cover a broader ground because suspension is just an aspect of chastisement. And uh, um, it is something that many times it is mentioned because it is not understood. Many people dread it either excessively or others have totally indifferent to it. But by the grace of God, with the short time we have, we want to talk about chastisement generally, and then and focus on that is honed into suspension, which is an aspect of chastisement. Because if you, we think that every chastisement is suspension, they were making a mistake. So that question is suspension in the church for retaliation or recovery. Before we get into the message proper, let's analyze that uh, topic a little. There are three key words there, suspension, retaliation, and then recovery. If you check any standard dictionary, it will define suspension as the act of suspending, the state or period of being suspended, the state or period of being suspended. And then suspension has to do with temporary removal from office, holding back something from somebody, maybe a privilege, temporarily removal from office or holding back some privilege the person is enjoying temporarily. That is suspension. Now the question is in church, when somebody is held back for some time or denied some privileges he has been enjoying, should it come as a result of retaliation? Retaliation is the act of harming somebody because the person has harmed you. The act of harming somebody because the person has harmed you. The act of putting some pain on somebody because the person has caused you some pain. That is retaliation. Eye for eye, paying somebody in his own life, in the thing he gave you, I gave him back. Of course, no Christian, nobody that is a disciple of Christ should have anything to do with retaliation. Jesus said to his disciples, be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. So anybody that causes harm, that person is not a disciple. So the case, question of retaliation should never come up at all in the church. On no ground, on no account should somebody pay back because of injury that he or she has suffered is paying the person back. In the person's kind, it should never occur. 
So the case of retaliation should be totally removed. So if anybody denies another of a privilege or a right or holds him back, told him to hold on, as a result of paying back, that person is not a sound disciple. That person is disobedient to Christ. So if it is not retaliation, then it should be recovery. A recovery is all about returning to a normal state, returning something to a normal state of health, normal state of mind or strength, returning back. Definitely, whatever is being done in church should be with that purpose. Now, let's, as I said at the beginning, suspension is narrow. Let's make it broader. Let's use the word chastisement or discipline, giving disciplinary measure. It is broader than suspension. And uh, if we're talking about chastisement in the church, they want to know what chastisement is. Chastisement is all about some form of pain, sorrow, something unsavory being brought upon another as a result of the person's error. That word chastisement is the noun form of the word chastise, which is a verb. And that word chastise came from a Latin word, castigore, castigore. And that has to do with to set or keep right. To set right, to keep right, or to make pure. Castigore is a Latin word from which we get chastise means to make pure, to set right, to keep right. So chastisement is all about setting something right, keeping something right, purifying, making purer, removing whatever is causing some pollution. So chastisement is all about purification, using some means to bring about purification. And often the time, the means are unsavory, are not palatable. There are things that are not what is desirable. But with such measure, the setting right takes place. Sorry for that broken transmission. So the infliction of corporal punishment as defined by law. So it has to do with some pain to the body being put on somebody according to the stipulation of the law. So there should be some law, some rule, something step, stated as regard what is to be done. That is what uh, the uh, Wik um, Wikipedia defines it, while Merriam Westpac -West Dictionary described it as the act of scolding or punishing someone. The act of scolding or punishing someone. So those are just different descriptions or definitions in English, but we draw it to the Bible. In fact, Webster spoke about in the Bible, it has to do with physical punishment or and beating or beating. So all about bringing some pain upon an erring person. Bringing some pain upon an erring person. Chastisement began from the creator of man. God brought in chastisement following the fall. It was not there originally. It was brought in following the fall. And at, at Eden, 
the father began the chastisement of his fallen creature. And then he gave rules or he, he gave uh, injunctions to his people. They called out once the Israelites on chastisement when he gave the laws or civil laws that were given to the Israelites. As a civil government, he gave them laws. Those laws have to do with if somebody did this wrong, look at the punishment to do, to give. And then to homes, he gave also rules on training up a child in the way he should go. Using the rod, we drive away folly because the heart of a child from childhood is tied with folly. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of courage from drive it away. So he gave rules also and to nurture. That is, nurturing has to do with chastening, using different means from speaking words to denying rights to even putting some pain on the body with rod. All of them are there under the chastisement. And then to the church, he also, by his spirit, also gave rules and gave injunctions as to that. So he himself, God, who created man, prescribed chastisement. So we need to know about chastisement. As I said at the beginning, suspension is an aspect of chastisement. If we just narrow it out to suspension, we wouldn't do justice to it. Suspension is a moderate form of chastisement. There are still more serious ones which people need to fear. Suspension is to be respected, but not to be dreaded. Shouldn't get into it, of course, but it is, shouldn't cost the hula balloon that it is causing today. If you understand what it is, many times you give room for people to talk, you find them talking without discretion because they don't understand. Meanwhile, it is a means of purifying, a means of healing the sick. So let's take a look at four points in the short time we have left. First point is the people for chastisement. After seeing the people for chastisement, we see the purpose of chastisement. Thirdly, we see the place of submission to authority. And fourthly, we see the principles and pattern of chastisement. All these are going to be, we are going to run through them. First of all, the people. Secondly, the purpose. Thirdly, the place of submission to authority. And finally, the principle and pattern of chastisement. With this, we we'll cover some ground on oh, this beautiful, this, uh, this good thing God brought into his house to make people better. Now, let's see the people for chastisement. Who are to be chastised? Remember the church, in the church. The church came from the Greek word ecclesia, and ecclesia means the called out ones for a divine purpose called out for a divine purpose. That word was used of the Jews who were in Israel, in Egypt, when they were called out into the wilderness on route, promised land. And I, uh, Acts of the Apostles 7 described them as the church in the wilderness. They called out once in the wilderness. People called out from Egypt for a divine purpose. God was leading them to a promised land where they would stay to exalt him and be a proof of his existence to mankind. So they were the church in the wilderness. Now the church of today are the called out ones from the world. People called out from sin and then enabled by grace to live for God. Chastisement, who are the people to be chastised among them? Those to be chastised are those that are members of the kingdom members of the kingdom. Unbelievers are not to be chastised in the church. Whatever is done to them cannot be called chastisement. Chastisement is for members of the church who have erred, E-R-R, -R, people that have gone astray, who have gone into doing something wrong, something usually very wrong. So people for chastisement are erring sins sins that are erring. Then what is the purpose of chastisement? The purpose of chastisement are for 
whether it is to Israel as a nation or to a home in the home, to people in the house, parents towards their children, or in the church. Four main points. Number one, the first purpose is to elicit godly sorrow, which bets salvation. To elicit godly sorrow that genders salvation. To generate sorrow of divine, that is divine. God's, the one permitted by God. The sorrow of the world is not acceptable. The sorrow that is gendered by chastisement is called godly sorrow, and it works out salvation. Let me just take a, a scripture there in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So there is godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. That is what the first purpose of chastisement. Then the second is to caution other saints and obliterate harmful influences. To caution other children of God who will be around, who are around, they are thereby obliterating, canceling harmful influences that the wrong of that saint could have caused to remove influ negative influences that the erring person generated that could affect the people. So caution the saints not to go that way and prevent the wrong the person did from affecting the people. Totally, to maintain respect for God, to maintain respect for God and for God's people in the eyes of the society, to maintain respect for God. Through the chastisement, the society respects God and respects God's people. And then fourthly, to obey God's injunction, to obey God's injunction. God gave a commandment that there should be chastisement. Now we're going to look at some scriptures before we now enter the third point, the place of submission. These are scriptures that should have served as my text, which I am bringing because of time. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 8, chapter 18, from verse 14 through 18. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 18, from verse number 14 through 18. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he will neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an hidden man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus speaking, noted the desire of the Father to retain and preserve his own. Before we are we read, Jesus had given a testimony of a parable of recovering the lost sheep, the shepherd going out for the single sheep that was lost to recover while keeping the 99 who were intact at a place. Definitely, he couldn't have abandoned those 99 to go and begin to look for one. In those days, shepherds 
had hirelings. By the time you have up to 100 sheep, you have one or two hirelings that start around with you to take care of the sheep. So for him, the shepherd was keeping the 99 sheep in the hands of the hireling because the place was a safe ground while he went to look for the only lost sheep. He didn't leave the hirelings to go to look for the lost sheep because the hirelings will simply come back and say they didn't see it since they are hirelings. But the shepherd is interested in the well-being of each sheep and went looking for it. So he says, in like manner, the father does not want any single sheep to perish. After that, he then gave this story or this rule. If a brother and another brother have some challenge, some problem, one is hurt by the other. One is uh, trespassed. The word trespassed there is translated sin, some other place, or offend. Haramatia. It has to do with missing the mark. Somebody that you are dealing with misses the mark and causes you a hurt. What do you do? Go to him alone and tell him what you feel that he has done. If he didn't listen to you, pick one or two other persons with you and go and explain. If he didn't take heed to their suggestion, then get the church involved. If the church comes in and that person still didn't hearken to the advice of the church, let that person be treated as a hidden, as a person of another nation, or an a publican. Publicans were people that were despised by the society because they were money, money they were callous, covetous people. So the society despised them then. So those were the two words Jesus used to qualify such a person that wouldn't listen to the church. See him as being of another nation. People that Jews looked down on people of other nations. They were called Gentiles. See that person as a Gentile and as a publican. Don't deal with him the way Jews don't deal with Gentiles and publicans. That is the power of the church, authority of the church. If the church waits in and the person remains, in, remains recalcitrant, then that person should be seen as a publican, as somebody of another nation. That's chastisement. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm going to, there's a case that Paul the Apostle had to address. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I read from verse 1 to verse 6, verse 19 through verse 13, verse 9 through verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter number 5, verses 1 to 6. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as I've said in the body, were present in the spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that had done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Verses 9 through 13. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to accompany with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For them must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous 
or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, no, not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without, God judge it. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Here, Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, the people that we are his children in the faith, where he stayed for years, two years there about two, three, ministering to them and not to move out. He now got some information of what was on ground in the church. There was a case of a young man that was living in incest with the mother-in-law, with the stepmother, his father's wife. And the thing was known. Nothing was done to him. And the church was still talking about Holy Ghost moving. Power of God. Gifts of the Spirit. We are operational in the Corinthian church. Paul said that you people are not ashamed. You are talking about, you are being puffed up by the manifestations of the power of God in your midst. The gifts of the Spirit. When such a rubbish is on. Such a saw is in the church. Such a person shouldn't be fellowship with that such a person should be handed over to the Satan so that Satan can deal with him, put some pain upon him, destroy his body that his soul may be saved. Then he recovered and said, when I said, don't company with the fornicators, is it together the people who are of this world that you should keep away from them? People who are extortionists in this world, it is not exactly that. It is not that you shouldn't talk to the people who are in this world who are fornicators. If you are not to talk to them, then what are you doing in this world? Go and become a hermit. That what I really mean is that for those who are in the church, who are fornicators, who are extortionists, who are railers, people that quarrel, words can come out of their mouths. They are belligerent. Their mouths are full of venom. Railers. They talk and talk and quarrel. Such people who are drunkards, who are extortioners, such people who belong to the church, you shouldn't have anything to do with them. No, not to eat. Don't have fellowship with them. They shouldn't be involved in fellowship with them. Those who are in the church and then who are still living such horrible lives. Then Paul concluded with, put away that wicked from among you. The man who committed incest and the people who are living in this kind of lives, we are categorized as the wicked. Put them out from among you. They shouldn't be among you. That's not suspension. That's why I say suspension is much lighter. This is excommunication. That is stronger. If somebody is suspended, okay, we're coming to suspension, is a milder form, moderate form of chastisement. These ones are extreme. When people are given to wickedness while remaining in the church, then some extreme measure are used to bring the salvation their way. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 5 to verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse number 5 through verse number 11. But if any have caused grief, he had not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many. So that contrary wise, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such an one should be swallowed up with much, over much sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye will confirm your love toward him. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, 
for your sakes forgive I it in the person of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. This is the second letter written to the same Corinthians, a follow-up of the first. About one year had passed or more when the second was written. So it was evident that that instruction Paul gave, they carried it out and excommunicated the man. Now he was now writing this follow-up letter now that such a man should be recovered. Lest Satan will now completely finish him up. And it's evident from the statement we read that the people disconnected from him completely. They, they didn't fellowship with him again. So he was now like a lonely bird, abandoned on the rooftop. He was excommunicated. Paul was now saying, forgive him, bring him back and show him love. Godly sorrow has been generated. So don't continue in the punishment. So this is excommunication. The first one, church has authority to wait into a matter. If the person that is at fault refuses to yield to the authority of the church, church has power to send him out. And whatever church decides, that is what the heavens will accept. That is what, where the heavens will stand, the power of God, the presence of God, angels of God will stand by that. So that brings me to the point, the place of submission to authority. This is very, very important, young men, young women. You are the future of our ministry, the future generation. You need to have knowledge of this truth. One must understand that God's kingdom is different from what goes on in the world. The way and rules of the kingdom of God are different from what goes on in the world. In the world, you can afford to do whatever you like, say whatever you like, make comments anyhow, and go scot free in the name of um, you have right, liberty, to freedom of speech and all that. In the God's kingdom, there is no freedom of speech in that regard. There are areas that you don't near, you don't go near, as per using of the word, as per murmuring, as per making comments that are ungodly or unacceptable to God. There are no go areas. There are people that have made comments and the comments they made brought judgment that took away their lives. The Bible says all things written afore time, they were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's why I said to come and talk this moment. I want to tell you about the authority of the church. We have said that it is the people in church who are born again that actually are to be chastised. We don't go to chastise people in the world. And then secondly, we have said that chastisement has four reasons or four aims. Number one, to elicit godly sorrow that brings salvation. Number two, to caution other saints so that they don't go the way of the erring. And also to ensure that the influences the error of the person generated does not affect them. Number three, we said to maintain respect for God and for God's people in the eyes of the society. Through what is done, people in the society who know about the case will have respect for God's house and for God. And then number four, to obey God's injunction. Then we want to say authority of the church. The institution called church, they called at once. And then there the are people placed in charge authority. In Romans chapter number 13, I'm reading from verse 1 through verse 4. Romans chapter 13 from verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? 
Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Verse 4, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beateth, beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute cross upon him that doeth evil. Originally, this pertains to people who are in government, people who are in government of the world. As far as they are godly, whether they are Christians or not, but they are following what is acceptable morally, they are God's instruments and people should submit to them. Christians should submit to them. If Christians should submit to those who are in the secular government, much more should they submit to those who are in the government of the body of Christ, who are placed at vantage positions to serve as God's instruments of bringing order, O-R-D-E-R, to the house of God. So such people that are placed in charge to bring order are to be respected, are to be obeyed. In verse 13 of that same chapter number 13 of Romans, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Let us walk honestly. The word honestly there means becomingly, appropriately, seemly, appropriately. Let us walk appropriately as in the day, not in rioting, causing confusion and drunkenness, losing sense of judgment, not in chambering, living in immorality, and wantonness, living in lasciviousness, not in strife and envying. Let's walk appropriately becomingly as children of light. So it is this, this uh, admonition that I want to bring that from this day, let people walk appropriately as required by God in God's house. Let us not be people that criticize authority, people that poke their noses into what does not really pertain to them. Instead of maybe asking the question, they are issuing orders and instruction. Or if they are asking the question, the question is very insulting, giving an impression that the people in authority are callous. People in authority don't know what they're doing because they got offended because what they didn't understand or couldn't understand, they thought they understood and then began to act. I want to read some scriptures. There is authority given by God that God wants everybody to recognize. Our own church, we have our daddy in the faith who is in charge. And that if he has raised up people who are to be in the disciplinary committee, you are to, to submit to the committee. If you find anything that seems not to be well, you don't insult them. If it is from your pastor and he is in charge of your parish or district, you are not to be insultive to him. You are not to be rude. Even if he makes a mistake, being a human being, he can make a mistake. Your reaction shouldn't be that that is despicable. Your reaction should show that you value his position. Think about Hannah, the woman that was burning, who was misunderstood by the high priest. High priest thought that she was drunk. And they came out and said, woman, how come you, you got drunk this early hours of the morning? That should have made a woman that had been in sorrow to flare up and query him. Why can't you understand, even though you're a man of God? But she, with humility and politeness, spoke and said, my Lord, uh, your handmaid, your servant is not drunk. I'm only pouring out my heart. If she was rude, the blessings that followed would have followed. These are things written at full time, written for our learning. Your pastor can make mistake. The uh, way he gave the chastisement can be, uh, can, may not be very smooth. You don't criticize and go all the way out insulting. 
Now, let me read some scriptures and then we see the principle and pattern of doing that. In Numbers chapter number 16, Numbers chapter 16, from verse number 41. Numbers 16, from verse 41, I will read through verse 49. The story was that Korah, Datan, and Abiran had rebelled against Moses. Moses had sought their hands for reconciliation, but they wouldn't. For them, is Moses the only person? Why is Moses lording it over all the Israelites? We are all holy. Moses tried to reconcile. They wouldn't give any food. Then Moses said, if I be a man of God, these people will, let's see how they will die. If they die naturally, then I'm not the man of God. God didn't call me. And suddenly, God said, let the people clear from these people. 250 princes joined him. And people cleared from their sight. And the ground opened and swallowed them. After that has happened, now from verse 41, after that strength happened, verse 41 through verse number 49. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation and behold, the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire thereon from off the altar and put on the incense. Go and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague had begun among the people. And he put on the incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was dead. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Beside them that died about the matter of Korah. Beloved youth, young adult. All things written aforetime time we are written for our learning. The people, Korah, Betan, and Abiran, had got some men of renown, 250 princes, who rose against Moses and wouldn't yield to Moses' beckoning. Plea for peace. Then God brought judgment, and the people went to hell alive. The next day, people began to complain. Moses and Aaron, they have killed this important man. And began to make noise. And God said, Moses, give way. Let me clear these people. Moses was a, a, very, a very man full of compassion. Moses immediately sensed judgment has come. And pleaded with Aaron to run quickly and set up the incense. Before Aaron could do anything, 14,000 had died. 14,700. If Aaron didn't do fast, more people would have died speaking and standing against authority. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, First Corinthians chapter 10, reading verse 10, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured, and we are destroyed on the destroyer. Look at the next verse. Now, all these things happened unto them for examples, 
and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. This thing happened to them. They were recorded so that we, in the time of the church age, the end of the world, may know about God's character, how God works, and draw lessons from what has happened to the people. As I said, you don't have an utopian society in the world. It is in heaven. On earth, human beings are in charge, and human beings have shortfalls. Human beings can make mistakes. The mistakes they make wouldn't make their authority to be taken from them by God. God put them there. God knows that they have mistakes. They can make mistakes. Yet the position he put them remains, remains something that God values. We, unto whom their mistakes could hurt, are to be wise so that their mistakes don't become our undoing. I'm not talking about ministers now, committees not being perfect. I'm talking about they can make mistakes. That should be clear. But how we attend to their mistakes matters a lot if they make mistakes, if. But many times what you hear people complain about, what you hear people make noise about are not really mistakes. They are that the people complaining did not understand. The same thing they talk about people in marriage committee and they say they make things miserable for people. Those are what the devils do. Devils do these things to prevent people from benefiting from the institutions God set up to assist his people. So based on that, if you go to marriage committee, they will delay you and delay you. So instead of going there, better go and marry outside. That's the devil. Nobody is delayed if the person went through. Anybody delayed is a person that has some problem with his presentation. Either he didn't have a testimony or he be they, they became suspicious of what he was saying. Or the thing he was presenting did not hold water. Or he did something wrong. Based on that wrong thing, then he was told to hold on. Now, the duration of holding on depends on who is in control. But thank God that the authority, the authority of the watchman has set up people to harmonize the disciplinary measures so that what is held in one diocese is the same thing held in another, another. But before then, we are to recognize and respect whoever is in authority. There is no utopian society on earth. Governments are run by fallible men prone to mistakes and challenges. Yet God does not despise those fallible men. In the church, God leads his servants to enact laws and rules that regulate the institution. And God respects their judgments. The rules and regulations that they enact follow the prevailing circumstances, what is on ground. Based on that, let's establish this rule, this law, so that there can be order in the house. For example, in our ministry, 1987, 1997, when I was getting married, there was no place for use of video, video uh, camera. I know a senior pastor, who told me based on who I was and people who were coming and told me that you get a video camera so that this thing can be recorded. But because I knew that the church hasn't permitted it, no matter who is coming, I shouldn't go against the rule of the church. And there was no coverage. In fact, even the snapshots that were taken by camera, we are scanty. At that time, it didn't look like something worth doing. But God knew that that is the level of our awareness at that time. And that was a divine rule. If I broke it, if I flouted it, because I say I want to keep document, a record of my wedding, I am going against the rule of the church. I am breaking the rule of the church. But today, video coverage is normal. 
that time, it wasn't accepted. These are changes coming in. The time I married or I wedded, nothing you want, it is colored dress with flowers. The women, flowers, such that the, the dress, you can wear it after a wedding today, you can wear it and come to church tomorrow and keep on wearing it. No white, it wasn't white, colored dress with flowers. That was the rule. If anybody broke it at that time, that person was broken, breaking a law established by divine authority. But today, it's not most white. So based on circumstances, laws are enacted. And those enacted laws are respected by God. Don't you know about Eli? Eli? In the time of Eli, a rule was put in place, which wasn't there in the time of Moses in which when there is the sacrifices that are being boiled, a priest will come with a, a fork having three prongs. And then when he strikes it in, whatever that fork was able to grab, that is what the priest takes as his own portion in that. God honored it. It wasn't there recorded by Moses. It was something brought in when the priest had become many so that this thing can go around. But the children of Eli flouted it. And that was sin counted against them for flouting that custom that was goodly. Flouting it was counted as sin against them. So based on circumstances, prevailing circumstances, laws can be enacted. When those laws are enacted, the child of God should respect those laws. As far as that person belongs to that ministry, and that ministry may not be holding that, you don't say that other ministry, I want to obey them. I want to follow them in this church. If you want to follow them, then you simply pack and go to that other church. When you finish, you may not have a time to come back. Because what are you coming back for? You now stay there. You go on your own and you stay there. You don't need to come back. Because if you come back, you're coming back to cause confusion. So wherever God has called you, be there. The law rules established by the authority are to be respected. Everyone is required to obey those rules. Flouting any rule that could bring disorder amounts to resisting the authority. There is no place for criticism in the kingdom. And one must avoid meddling with other people's matters. Avoid meddling with other people's matters. The principle and pattern of chastisement. Quickly, the measure of chastisement is a function of the gravity of the offense of the erring saint. The kind of chastisement given is usually proportional to how grievous his error or her error is, the wrong she or he has done. That is the first point. If the offense or the error is minor, the chastisement may be minor, it can be ordinary reproval, admonition, sitting down and talk to him, talk to her. It can be sharp talking, rebuke. It can even be public rebuke, depending on the gravity. and. Uh, on other factors I'm going to mention, that will determine if it is minor. But when it is major, it goes to something more serious. If it is something that can cause other people to stumble, a thing that can make other people to stumble, or a thing that pollutes the assembly, then something more grievous is meted out, some stiffer punishment like what happened in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. That one was grievous, serious. If nothing is done, it, it has complications that can arise from it. So expel him from the church. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, quickly, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm reading verses 14 and 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, from verse number 14. This one is to make somebody ashamed. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him 
that he may be ashamed. Have no company with him, that he may be ashamed, yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. In this case, stay away, that he may be ashamed. He may still be in the midst of the church, may be sitting down at one place, but it will be made known that this person is not to be associated with for some time, that he may be ashamed. Those are more grievous things. Now, there are other factors that play in the meeting out of the measure. The penitence of the erring, that person who is erring, if he is really penitent, the weight of punishment or chastisement is usually reduced, usually. If the person is broken, in some cases, the person that is broken and a first offender in many times may not even go with any chastisement. It may even be ending up with admonition. But many times people will delay and keep that sin until God reveals it. Or they have stayed too long because of pride. Then somehow they are forced to come. That time you don't see penitence. It will seem as if he's a man or thing. So you find the chastisement being weighty. So penitence. Secondly, the Christian experience. How long has the person been a Christian? Somebody who is a young convert. If there are sins he commits, and then it is more of counseling. But somebody who has been in the faith, who has been a follow-up minister, who has been a pastor. That same thing, something more grievous is given to him. The Christian experience. Thirdly, the sincerity of the erring. These are things that are factors that affect what is given as a punishment or chastisement. I'm trying to avoid punishment as chastisement. The sincerity. If somebody comes and is very open, is not, not keeping back anything, you find that it is easier and the person is handled better. Another factor is the publicity of the case. If that case is known, then you cannot just cover it. If it's a known case, then something has to be done for the sake of the people that, have, that know. That's why we spoke about the purpose. One of it is for the sake of the church, the people, other sins, so that they don't go that way, so that it doesn't influence them. If somebody did something very bad and nothing was done to him, when that temptation comes to another person, the person can yield because first person did nothing was done to him. But when there was chastise, when there chastisement, you will find that everybody is cautious. So if the thing is known, it will usually bring out chastisement that people will also see so that nobody will go that way. Therefore, having known that people who are more experienced have stronger chastisement, those who are younger in the faith shouldn't be looking at our people 10 years, 15 years, that have chastised for 15 years. Who are you to query authority? Is that person being chastised a newcomer? Do you know that this thing works grace? It is a purification process. And by the time the person has gone through the program, scripturally, God puts him on a level that he may not have attained if he didn't include that experience. All things, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. All things include mistakes that are made, include errors somebody went into. If the person loves God and is called according to God's purpose, all things, including that, we work for his good. So let us not be people poking our noses into that person was chastised. That person has stayed two years and three years. It shouldn't be a business. What you should be calling, Lord, pray for the people. If you see somebody being chastised, pray for him. There's nothing wrong with if you go to him, encourage him. It is not to play and uh, talk about entertainment. It is to admonish, encourage. Then people in church should admonish. But there are cases in which somebody is 
to be kept away from, as we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, that he may be ashamed. So it is not a thing of, ah, let's, let's go for, for picnic and then go for party and come and eat. No. Chastisement is a divine, is, is a divine prescription for health in the church. The saying goes, where there is no discipline, there is no direction. The extreme of chastisement is excommunication. And God's word says, whatever the church binds, that's what is bound in heaven. It is only the excommunicated that if death takes place, nobody is sure of where he will go to. But if you are in church, maybe giving black seat for reproach or shame, or you are stopped from what you are doing, which is called suspension. What you are doing, you are stopped from it. You are not stopped from coming to the church. That's so special. That's a moderate stopping from what you are doing. If you are a child of God, living right, if the rapture takes place, you are going straight to heaven. Nobody will go to heaven because of the work he is doing or she is doing. Nobody will enter heaven because he is preaching or not preaching. If you are stopped from preaching and you are living right, you are going straight to heaven. And some people that might even help to stop the person may not even go to heaven. So stopping you, suspending your work, denying you of some privileges cannot prevent you from going into heaven. If death comes, you go straight to heaven. If the rapture comes, you go straight to heaven. It is the excommunicated because they have been sent out of the church. It is that, that one he left to God to know how they are at the point of death. But for us, this is what we know. So brethren, a lot, there are a lot of things to say about uh, chastisement. Those who are chastising are supposed to do it with love. Just as parents chastise children with love, so also should those who are chastising use it with love. Now, the fact that somebody, a, a man, or when he was a youth, he was stubborn. That doesn't mean that if his child is stubborn, he should leave him to go. Because when I was a youth, I was stubborn. So the child is stubborn now, I won't chastise him. No. The fact that God saved me from stubbornness should make me to make my children not to be stubborn because that way is not okay. So the fact that we are all weak, God is helping us, does not mean that if somebody does wrong, we leave it. But whatever chastisement, you are carrying out, it must be with love. And if there is love in the heart, there is no room for revenge. It will be to recover. Everybody has a part to play. People in the church, if they feel something is getting longer, it is more prayer. The pastor in the church, the parish pastor, if you find that this brother is coming, but he has been giving bench for a long time, the pastor can stand in and go to committee and say, please, there is one of my children who has been on this seat for a long time. I stand to tell you that he is converted. The pastor can go and speak on his behalf. So I will leave it for, for now so that we maybe we'll take more questions from the questions uh, Baruch Samayak will ask, then we have got more, uh, we have given more feathers to the message. God bless you. So, Baris Amarik. And I thank you so very much, sir. I appreciate the teaching. And I'm sure everyone who has participated from the beginning will also comment that it has been a wonderful time, but especially looking at some of the responses we got to the questions that were sent out. A majority of the questions have been attended to very many of them, actually, very, very many of them. Uh, that some of them we are still going to ask anyway, but some, sir, I will forward it to you, sir, um, as, uh, so you can look at them so that we'll know the way forward. Some are more like recommendations. Some are matters that need to be investigated again, um, I suppose, because from the, from the graphics that we had, from the responses, majority of the people that responded are actually on suspension because we asked, are you on suspension or do you know somebody who's on suspension and the rest of that. And the people that responded, majority of them are on suspension. So I want to assume 
that these are life cases, these are life responses, and they need to be investigated. So we'll just take a few questions that uh, we feel have not been uh, attended to from the teaching. I'm also working with a team of other young adults, so they are sending me questions, and then I will look at them and see if they still fall under what has already been treated or what needs to be looked at. Okay, so I want to start with this question. Uh, we've had cases where somebody is placed on suspension and the person is totally avoided, irrespective of the nature of the offense. So the question is, when somebody is placed on suspension, what should be our treatment of the person? Some persons were totally isolated, some were avoided by the church members, and even in some cases, the ones we had, the person left the church, nobody knew the person had even left the church. Some maybe for one reason or the other, not, not um, leaving the church entirely, but maybe left that location, and nobody noticed because nobody has actually cared all this while. So if we know the extent to which we can relate with them, maybe it will help us to also see how we can be of help to them, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I, when I got this, uh, this information about the meeting, I had to, this today, to send to our parish and district pastors to ensure that they hook up. Because you find that uh, different things may be happening in different places. First of all, the way we handle youths shouldn't be the way we handle adults. That's the first, first thing. And most of the times I always um, call for matters that pertain to youth to come to the diocesan office. That's the first. Um, for adults, depends, it depends on what the individual did. If it is something that was public, maybe a case of immorality and the thing brought scandal. It is part of what we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. That person can be avoided for some time. But being avoided doesn't mean that there's no place for admonition. Some people can reach and admonish and say, brother or sister, uh, we, are, we are praying for you. When somebody hears we are praying for you, it brings some solace into the heart. But for shaking hands and uh, extending, exchanging pleasantries, no, such matter shouldn't be. If somebody is sitting on the black seat, usually black seat are cases that should be reproached, that have some reproach. There should be no chatting, but there is a place for admonition in which mature people will use scriptures and speak with the person. That is okay. If somebody is sent out of the church, sent out, the person can still be admonished, but you don't go to cause the person, you don't go to interact and uh, do anything that will be inimical, that will make him not to feel that disconnection from the church. So nothing is wrong with admonishing people. And in fact, it should be encouraged. It is just sad that, or rather I say, I take responsibility for whatever happens in diocese, that we have not come back to our evangelism and follow up, which things we want to come back to from November. We want to come back to evangelism and the follow up. So lack of going with scriptures to such people is traceable to loss of interest in evangelism and follow up. So if somebody is under chastisement, that person should be followed up, but it is with admonition using scriptures. It is not to make the person comfortable. The pastor should hear it. So it is right. duty of the shepherd in a location to ensure that that person is not lost, that the treatment given by the committee does not lead to him or her being lost. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. Uh, we have a case or some cases, but I just picked one uh, for the sake of time. We have somebody... They are like a group of five young sisters. And then one of them in the group had a problem with the pastor and the pastor placed the sister on suspension. And then the pastor came back and placed the other four also on suspension because they are friends to this person that was placed on suspension. So the question now is, is it every offense that should lead 
to suspension? If not, what and what offenses can lead one to be placed on suspension? Okay, you know, I would prefer a more balanced, uh, a more balanced presentation is to hear from the pastor. Okay. Because if I'm not here from the pastor, we cannot conclude with the young sisters what they said. But I think the office of the Asian pastor is very open to youths. Office of the Asian pastor is very accessible to these young ones who are coming up. So if somebody feels that he or she is being mistreated, you can come around to the office of the Asian pastor. All right, sir. So we have a lot of cases where persons were placed on suspension and some for like 10 years, some five years, depending on the nature of uh, this thing. But I think while you were talking, you made mention of what can make the suspension period to be very long. Uh, because people are asking what actually determines the duration of suspension. But I think that has already been uh, taken care of. So, but now I want to ask that. Is it possible for us to have set down rules and regulations for suspension? Uh, because for me, I think it will be easier when people know clearly defined limits as to this should not be done, that should not be done. Not that I wear a shall be, for example, now my younger sister is wedding who is not a watchman, and I wear a shall be, that is the family cloth to the place, and church members see me there, they report, and the pastor places me on suspension, such issues like that. So can we have set down rules and regulations that can help us to know our limits when it comes to this yes there is a committee right now working on such rules but as you mentioned as should be i suppose or as she be i suppose the person is a worker <laughs> i don't think a, a, an other member of the church we as i should be and then there was a place of suspension the voice is a worker so mm -hmm. as a worker is a worker supposed to go into those affiliations? No, the worker is a soldier, the worker is a prisoner, the worker is an ambassador. So the way a worker is handled is not the way somebody who is just coming to church is. So the worker should know the commitment that that office demands from him or her. Okay. Yes, sir. So I want to know what are the recovery uh, recovery plans of the church because um, okay I've talked about when someone is placed on suspension person is usually isolated and all of that and it's like, like no follow up so I want to know do we have any recovery plans in place or are we working on anything in that in that regard? Yes, as I spoke to the pastors now, um, it is the duty of a shepherd in his location to ensure that he follows up anybody that is being suspended remember we said that the shepherd or rather i want to say that the shepherd should not seek should not permit the loss of any sheep so if suspension had been meted to anybody the duty of the pastor to ensure that person is not lost now the pastor shouldn't go of course he should know that that the pastor shouldn't speak evil of the committee he should seek to recover his sheep now if the person has been faithful he has seen godly sorrow it is his duty to come up and remind the committee that such as such a person has been there for such as such a time it is his duty sometimes the committee may not give any specific time when they have a kind of an open ended disciplinary measure that person can be called back in three weeks can be called back in three months his or her attitude her response to god goes a long way to determine how long she or he will last if that person prays through that thing may not last long but there are cases in which it is fixed, one year, two years, or whatever. Still, the person can still be released before that duration if the person is penitent. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Thanks, sir. So we have cases where parish pastors or district pastors place their members on suspension indefinitely. Now, the question is, do we have like a reporting system? What we mean by that is, do we have a system where parish pastors report 
matters that are maybe people going under uh, going through disciplinary measures report to the district and the district in turn reporting to the diocese because if we have this kind of a system we think that it will be a form of check on pastors permit me to say sir pastors who are uh, going beyond their boundaries just permit my use of words sir uh, so if we have this kind of a system we think it will help to check all such uh, cases in the locations. So I don't know if we have that in place. Okay, I'm just hearing for the first time that there are people that uh, chase type for a long time. I'm hearing for the first time. I'm not aware that there are cases of parish pastors or district pastors keeping somebody for a long time. I know that parish pastors or district pastors can tell somebody to hold on. Then when they say hold on, the matter is brought to me and I come in. So I don't know of cases where somebody is held for a long time and a person is staying under disciplinary measure. I'm not, let's all people bring up the matter to me. Yes, sir. Well, Once uh, somebody is sure, let the person bring up the matter. Yes, sir. We've indicated to some of them that they should get us their location and the other details so that it will help in the handling of the matter. OK. Uh, OK, sir. Now, someone said that, does it mean that when someone commits, I think that has been answered. Okay, no. Does it mean that when someone commits a sin, for example, and is placed on suspension, the person has not been forgiven until the suspension is served? No. God forgives you. The suspension is akin to putting pain so that you don't return. Like David. King David, after the atrocities that he carried out, when Nathan came, he broke down. After Nathan revealed he had been a hypocrite, he broke down. And Nathan informed him that you have been forgiven, but there will still be chastisement coming. You need to pay some price for what you have done. So the chastisement given is to prevent people from continuing when, she start, when temptation call again, and also to make the people or whoever that speaks against God to have their mouth shut so that people will respect God and God's people. So chastisement is not, does not, it doesn't go together with forgiveness. God can, once you repent, God forgives you. Now, if what the person did concerns the church, like there are sins where somebody pollutes the church. Sin of murder, you spill blood, you are polluting that church. Sin of sexual immorality, you pollute the church. Such are sins that you have to make restitution to the church. If you have repented, God forgives, but the church needs to let you go because you have also done evil to them. That's why Paul said to the person that had in First Corinthians chapter 5, and then chapter in Second Corinthians, he said, if you have forgiven him, I also have forgiven him. He sinned against the church with spoiling the name of the church and whatever he was doing. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, from the responses we got, um, I, I think I won't be wrong to say that some cases were actually wrongly treated in times past. I believe, like our daddy has said to us, that the church has recommenced, and I suppose that some of these cases will be reviewed. Now, if that is the case, sir, can we know the procedure that the people can follow so that these matters can be properly channeled to the diocesan officer? Okay. For review. Okay. Anybody that is not satisfied with whatever was meted to him can write a letter to the diocesan pastor stating his case be sincere, stating his case and his name or her name and contact, being truthful. Remember we said chastisement is to heal. No person, no father wants to take a cane and begin to flog his child who does not have a problem. So everybody will be happy when somebody is recovered. So. If you feel that you have not been treated well, write. They try to also be a Christian when writing. Don't insult anybody in the course of writing. 
and it is also wise if you write you send a copy to the person that that uh, you are doing with so that the person will know that you have written okay, what's your name right, your phone number your parish yeah. and the case yes, sir. okay sir so why do parents get suspended for the offenses committed by their children okay that's a very good question a very good one no parents will usually be suspended if that parent on one hand did not did what he's supposed to do or she's supposed to do that's one hand on another hand ministers this is not members of church now ministers can be told to hold on based on what their children did even though they did their best i'm going to also talk about that so the first one is if a father or a mother who is a worker did his duty or her duty as a parent towards his or her child and then that child did what was wrong that parent cannot be suspended or disciplined for the sin of the child but if that parent was defending the child when people we are trying to show that this child is having problem then that parent goes in with that child but for ministers why a minister may be told to hold on with ministration because of what his child did is that the minister is preaching and if he keeps on preaching when the child's testimony is on what he's saying will not have weight some people will begin to say go and preach your child first so that's on one hand and the minister is explained it is explained to the minister we are not punishing you for what your child did look at why secondly it is also to make that child feel sorrowful that look at what i did has caused my father look this chastisement this this uh this uh suspension from activity to make that child mourn more so a, a, we are parents and as a parent we should be able to bear pain from what our children did if that pain can work out salvation in them that is why we are parents so we are not really chastising that parent but we explain to that parent look at why we are doing this so we are not punishing you look at the two arms that we are considering salvation of your child and then what people will say but if parents who are not pastors have their children do wrong they are not punished at all the children's sin cannot be put on parents next right. question okay sir can, some, can someone go to take counsel from a pastor who is on suspension that is very wrong if a pastor is on suspension he shouldn't give any counsel that's why he's on suspension that's a pastor did wrong and he's on suspension yes sir but if the pastor like i said now if it is like his child did something he's not really on suspension he is kept out from the pulpit from preaching so if it is maybe his child did something that is different altogether but if it is that the pastor did wrong and he told to hold on he, he shouldn't be praying for people he shouldn't get into counseling people if he does he's not having the punishment the chastisement all right sir. so while you were talking you mentioned the fact that uh, there's a committee that has been set up now and they they're working on harmonizing the the procedure in all the dioceses now the question is this uh, we know that in some dioceses at the moment they they observe the black seats uh, principle but in some other dioceses they don't in fact somebody said in some western uh, parishes or locations they don't also so the question is why if somebody is on is on suspension why the black seats and secondly is the black seat principle is it scriptural yes it is a reproach you see in we read second Thessalonians chapter three where something was stated to make the person ashamed 
the black seat is put there such that anybody who knows who sees somebody sitting there will say the person has done wrong. And that will bring kind of shame to the person. It is, you know, the Bible is a book of ideas. Ideas. So somebody cannot say in the Bible there's no black city. No idea. The idea here is that people that do some, there are some things that people do that should be made manifest to the church such that church can look at them somehow that that may yield some sorrow that will lead to proper salvation. So that is the basis of the black city to make a kind of make them ashamed so that they can have proper repentance. Okay, sir. So we have we've had cases where some pastors uh, threaten their people with suspension. I will place your suspension and they sometimes do it because they are the ones in charge of the location. That was why we asked, asked the earlier questions if there is a reporting system so that can be checks and balances in the location. Um, now, the question is this, uh, is it possible to also have trainings once in a while for some of our pastors or maybe all of them? I'm happy that some of them are on right now and they've been on since we started. If you can have trainings for some of them or all of them so that the, this issue of emotional intelligence can be inculcated into the leadership style in the locations. Okay, thank you for also this, uh, this chip. I believe that for quite some time, I have not been available. Much of the time I've been away, but I'm trusting God that this time around, I'm coming home and I will, will give some more time to ministers and uh, to members of the church. So this suggestion, I think along the line, they are all going to come in. We have not had, we have not been having many stars uh, convocations two days, three days programs in which all these um, areas of ministry can be brought in. Once we settle, such things should become normal. So let's trust God for this time we are entering into. So well, one more question, and I think I'll be done because some of the questions are actually repetitions and some of them are more like recommendation that will be looked into uh, much later. You had, I think you touched just slightly the recovery plan of the church for those who are on suspension. Um, you mentioned follow-up. I, I don't know, beyond follow-up, I don't know what other plans that we have to recover these people, knowing fully well that every hand is needed, needed on deck for the vision that God has given unto us. And every soul is also very important in the sight of God. Yes, I know that maybe the thought of duration of chastisement may be in the mind of many. Um, how long, uh, how long chastisement should last? All that will be taken care of uh, by, by the committee that is coming up. But I always want to encourage people, brethren, by informing them that Jesus, Paul wrote and said, suffer yourself to be defrauded. Allow yourself to be cheated. Assuming there is an, uh, that you are going through a program and then the thing has stretched so much, just let that scripture keep your heart. If somebody feels that this thing is too long, I've stayed too long, the person could, as some have been doing, write to the Dicean pastor explaining his condition. If anybody writes, that matter is looked into and given appropriate attention. As I said, the pastors in the various locations, because it's not like we have just a disciplinary committee looking over the whole diocese. It cannot be them going to the various parishes to enact anything. It is the pastor who is in charge that should see his flock and ensure that he doesn't lose his flock. So that is more of the process of recovery. The committee is there to assist, to give them the measures that should be given. The pastor should do what they should do as parents to ensure 
that the measures serve appropriate uh, serve appropriately. But people who are chastised, let them understand that as far as you are not sent out of the church, you are heaven bound if you are living right. So that chastisement is, or if it's suspension now, is just don't work as a worker. You can still do that work without being a worker. So all troubles and this and that shouldn't arise at all. What? Somebody who says, I want to work. If it has stayed too long, write to the same pastor and then the same pastor can look into your case. Okay, sir. Um, sir, I just want to make this suggestion. Is it possible to have, because I know, like you said, sir, that the committee at the Dazan level, they may not have so much, um, you know, they may not be able to go to all the locations and the rest of that. Because some of the cases that we have that some people felt that they were not properly treated was because the matters, according to them, were not well investigated. Is it possible to have like subcommittees in the locations, the same district committee that will be in charge of investigating matters so that it won't just be the pastor alone who is the one hearing and then meting out measures to people? Is it possible, sir? Uh, it is possible, but we mustn't allow the district committee to now become an institution of itself. And then we're now looking for people who have committed sin to give measures. <laughs> we mustn't allow that. It's not supposed to be so. Because before you know it, it becomes a big market. We have people are now, we want to see how it can stop. When we become very busy, if as we pick up evangelism now, you'll find that cases of disciplinary measures will just go down. You see, it is when people are idle that the devil makes them busy. If people begin to do evangelism now, which we want to enter from November, you see that all these cases of sin will go down. Now, if somebody wasn't properly investigated, that person can always appeal. Everywhere there's a place for appeal. You can always appeal to the same office. Make your appeal, write it, and come up. We we'll look into it. So that's what I want to encourage. But Let's avoid doing anything that we that will call for a, a, a people to look into my matter. When I joined the watchman, I heard the man of God say that was 1987 that he made up his mind that he would not get into a case with anybody, and that is what I took. That is what I took. If somebody hurts me, I simply leave you to go. Somebody kiss me. I will not get into any case with the person. So that's what I take. And that's what I want to encourage people. Be a person that will not distract the church. And if you pursue that way, God's grace will carry you through. Thank you, sir. So we have a question from the platform. It was not part of the ones we had before. I just feel that we should take it. There's this general notion that pastor's children are above suspension. Uh, compared to every other members of the church. I know it may be ob ob obtainable in some other places, but I don't think it's obtainable in our cases. But for this person to have asked, maybe he has a case like that. But is it possible, sir? No, appropriately, as I said at the beginning, that we must look at who is the person born again. That's why I say youths. I want to deal with their cases. Because what is happening to youth is different from what happens to adults. So over here, depends on what, we have not had such a case in which a pastor's child did something and then nothing was done. But if a pastor's child, for example, if a youth, a youth, a girl of 18 years became pregnant, for example, that's an extreme case, we won't bring that child to the church and then announce it for everybody to know that this girl that is 18 years old has become pregnant. We won't do that. But we will encourage that she will leave the church and then maybe we advise her on the church to go to. We will even speak to the parents to assist because we won't allow her to come to church because other youths may go her way. But if it is an adult, we can announce it because it needs to be announced because an adult is an adult. But a youth is a youth. So if a pastor's child maybe also maybe goes that way, that's the same way the person will be treated. 
So in the place where the person must have seen it, it must be the same way, this kind of thing. But there's nothing else that uh, has come up in which the pastor's son, a parish pastor, this pastor's child did something and then was allowed to go because the parents are pastors. Okay, sir. Very last question, sir, and then we'll be done for today. Someone was suspended um, in one of our locations in Lagos here because the pastor said in a dream he saw the sister having the spirit of immorality. Uh, I, I, this for me, this sounds very ridiculous, but it happened in Lagos. I've asked them to send me the location so I can forward it to you, sir. Uh, I don't know how we can check all these kind of ridiculous cases that may be coming up or that yes. have been there before now. Okay, that is good. That is part of why the, this I, um, I welcome this platform and I ensure that pastors are connected. Um, those are things we handle in the pastors forum. So as somebody does not overstep so that, but we need to know who the person is and to be sure that what the person claimed is what happened because we must appreciate that the one person may give, say something and give his own side of a story. When the other person says, you see that it's altogether not true. So let the person, let the people come up, their contacts so that uh, by November, God willing, we'll have time to speak with them. Okay. Right, thank you so very much, sir, for your time. God bless. Uh, we appreciate the teaching, the people for chastisement, the purpose of chastisement, the principle and pattern, and then uh, the place of chastisement. Thank you so very much. I want to appreciate everyone that has joined us. Uh, you have heard it from our daddy. If you have any case that needs to be reviewed, very simple, just write. And if you don't know how to write, you can write through me. I will get our daddy. He is very accessible and available. We have enjoyed his support over the period. In no small measure, he's always there for us. So if you think your case needs to be reviewed, please, 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 instead of murmuring, instead of complaining, instead of speaking against the church, please put your uh, position forward and then let's look at it. Sir, we we'll appreciate it if you can pray for us so that we can close for tonight. Okay, um, before I pray, I want to inform the uh, brethren who are on suspension that the dispatch committee prays for them after every session of uh, attending to people, they always pray for those who are chastised so that the people who are chastised shouldn't ever think that the people are just some callous men that are throwing people, children around. They pray for them. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for these young ones who are connected. Thank you for your word that you have enabled us to share within less than one hour, which thing that we are going to develop and then have some more time to speak better. Everlasting Father, I commit all who are under some chastisement. Lord, your word to me is that it is hospitalization. And if somebody is undergoing hospitalization, Lord, by the supervision of a doctor of renown, that hospitalization will end with recovery of health. Father, I therefore pray as the great physician that all such people under some chastisement be perfectly healed and be elevated to a higher platform of service and ministry, higher platform of serving the Lord in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. For that as many as have maybe one reason or the other stopped coming to church, but they got connected. I pray you restore such, recover them and let them look back and see how wonderful God has been through the exercise that they have been into. Then Amen. Lord in heaven, your way is a way that is beyond human understanding. You have a way of using the negative to work out positive. Let all such people come to a, a level, a, 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 le a level of awareness that will make them encourage people never to look back when they begin to follow God. Let all such condemnation in the hearts be flushed out and let Amen. faith be injected into their hearts to keep Amen. on trusting 
Father, I also pray that the committees, oh God, will look at some people who have repented and release them so that people will say, thank God for that meeting. In the name of Jesus, I commit Amen. the ministers unto you, great Father, that thou will keep them as shepherds, all having the mind of shepherds, having the mind of parents who love their children, so that whatever they are doing, they are doing it with the mind of parents who love and not with the mind of competitors who want to show that they are in control. Therefore, Lord, take hold of your ministers and make them parents indeed. In the name of Jesus, let Amen. nobody go with offense. Let the Holy Ghost walk in every life and establish all impurity. Seeing that the day of the Lord is at hand, the church age is winding up, and nobody can afford to trivialize righteousness. Father, I thank you for the people who have put their heads together to form this, to bring up this young uh, youth, young adult forum. Oh Lord, strengthen them. Give them yeah. more ideas. Give yeah. them more ideas. Let them yeah. prosper all around yeah. so that they can continue to make themselves available to the Lord in yeah. all yeah. areas of life. In Amen. the name of Amen. Jesus Christ, Amen. go all Lord in glory to bless them. Bless all who are connected. The people that made it possible for us to speak together, Lord. Ah, Lord, let them be majestically blessed of the Lord. In Amen. the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. have your way and perfect that that concerns your people. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you all. Good night, sir. Good night, everybody. God bless you.